When I first walked into the room at Burnie, I was excited. The works were lively, colourful, large. Some waved to us across the room with their noise and colours. Some were quietly waiting for us to get to them. But the initial feeling for me was great excitement and then feeling very daunted was in the room and each one of them had such a big story and we wanted to be sure that we got close to that and could feel that love coming through the work to us and slowly slowly our excitement started to become much more um, manageable and our hearts calmed down because the works reached out to us and invited us to enjoy them quietly and look closely at them. So this privilege of closeness was something very special. Putting your ideas out in the world, I think, is a really, you know, big move for a lot of people. A lot of people just create things quietly at home and never get them out there in the public domains. The work started to dance in our minds and continued to dance in our minds, which was a very, very beautiful thing to be part of. In this work in the room where we could examine very carefully the making and that artist knew exactly what they were doing in terms of craftsmanship construction of paper because paper was originally first invented as a clothing material. Well, one of the reasons it was made in Japan so many thousands of years ago was because people wore it. And the fact that models were putting these works back on their bodies and all of the artists who were making their works knew that. To care for the skin was really important. And this artwork stood out because the it was a lightweight thing, the model was going to be able to move in it very carefully but light-heartedly it wasn't constraining the person who was wearing it the red paper was a beacon in the room the red one single color of red paper she'd manipulated in so many different ways that it could have been a thousand different reds the light bouncing from the surfaces that were so many complex curves and the shadows and the highlights just created this, a wonderland of red. The story, super clever to put this bee there, but not actually tell us why it was there. But my fellow judge recognized it, bless her, she said it's a blue banded bee. And I know a little bit about Australian native bees, but not anywhere near enough. But I know enough to know that they are incredibly important. I was invited to do a lot of work and that is very clever art making. It is concertinaed, like paper reacted, uh, reacts. It was on the body in a very, very simple form, but the complexity within it was very appealing. Um, also the backstory of the, um, uh, the bee, the Australian uh, native bee and the Waratah. Uh, uh, was was very appealing to me. So it, it was multi-layered and simplistic all at the same time in, in every way that you looked at it. Uh, what I loved was how comfortable the model felt in it to be able to move and turn. Um, it, it was, it, even though it, the silhouette of Warata is, um, is round it's not bulky and and i guess in a sense it, it looked incredibly refined on the body it's a perfect demonstration of the adage less is more Cleverly, cleverly constructed. Once again, the purity of the paper was absolute. It was paper and sewing machine thread. 
and a very small amount of that. So there are really only two ingredients in the entire thing. I think there was a little bit of tape around the sleeves, but absolutely nothing else for the construction. So that artist or the artist in this case had understood what paper could do and absolutely pushed it to another level. Um, and the paper that they had access to, this absolutely beautiful paper, American packaging paper, it was a beautiful thing, perfectly um, engineered. There wasn't one element not needed and there wasn't one more thing we could have wished for. It was a complete piece. And so it made the wearer have the appearance that she could be a futuristic person. You know, she had this ability to be shielded with all of these different pieces of light. Also, she might have been able to fly or with this idea of scale, she might have been able to swim. Who knows, but it was an intriguingly beautiful work. Um, it was just incredibly magical. And um, it was almost as if uh, this costume or this, this piece of work or this art piece um, unveiled itself to us and, um, and that was a very magical moment. A technically astounding piece, um, incredible precision and um, construction and uh, that was probably the knockout thing for me. So many people have done it, but I haven't seen anybody do it quite as elegantly and comprehensively because the skirt was or is a, a linked line of the tags of tea bags. And we can see which one she prefers to drink or her friends prefer to drink. And that's one thing that normally always is goes in the recycled. I've never seen that being used before in that way. So to so painstakingly collect all of those tiny little bags and join them up and turn them into a skirt. I want one. I want one of those skirts. Uh, I love the way that the, the model could virtually run in it and I wanted her to pirouette because if she pirouetted, that was going to be, you know, every girl's dream. That was going to be the full swirl skirt circle. The bodice was made with the tea bags very compressed and beautifully made. The headdress also beautifully made. The ring was a standout, but she made shoes as well. I mean, this is the outfit. This was encouragement award. We want to see more from this artist. For me, as well as the criteria that was laid out for the judges, it satisfied to me the way that we should be moving in terms of recycling, repurposing, reusing, and, um, and this piece um, really encapsulated that and um, and that was impressive for me. The paper award section was one very close to my heart. I've been a paper maker for a very long time and so I was looking for an artist who understood the absolute beauty of fine you know the the woman wearing this outfit was invincible she was wearing paper but she could take on the world in that thing and the cloak was so beautifully constructed with um, triangle scales down its back once again it was the finest paper but you had a sense of protection so she'd taken it was a a joy of the play between something very light, very soft, and the idea that it also gives a power or a, an extra skin to the wearer. It was very clever work. It was the texture of the different techniques that really um, impressed me, and the use of those textures combined together to form one outfit, and um, those techniques that we used were really impressive. The, the textural elements, combining this artistry together in one outfit um, was really um, beautifully done and it was very harmonious and poetic. Mm -hmm. 
it's not just the visual texture, but you want to just put your hands on it and, you know, get in, get physically involved in a piece of work like that. I would like to talk to you today about the, the winner of the Pam and Neil Thorne Award. This award was sponsored by well-known artist, paper maker, raconteur, wonderful woman, Janet DeBoer. Karen has created a, a simple little dress with circles of paper that have been then hand painted, hand colored, hand stitched to create the garment uh, that also comes with a face mask and a headband. It really responds to what Neil and Pam Thorne do. They provide our community with consistent thought provoking and interesting artwork they support artists they support events and so i could think of no no better work to represent their contribution to paper on skin To have this event in Burnie is absolutely perfect. And while the industry has changed, this allows a community to keep paper alive, remind the people of Burnie of that legacy of the wonderful workers that they've had. So many people in Burnie either still worked at the pulp or have family who worked at the pulp. So there's a great pride in the city about their place in the paper story. This is another chapter in that, and a very fine one. And the fact that it could still continue in the year of COVID is a miracle. I think that that's a, a really important connection, the connection with the Burnie Regional Art Gallery. And um, it certainly offers a, a much broader cohort, um, the opportunity to see what goes on in that environment. It takes a lot of courage to get your work out in the public domain. Yeah, there's an element of risk taking um, involved in bringing any of any creative ideas to fruition. I'd really like to give everyone an award just for being, being brave enough to turn up. The, the making is still the thing that keeps us going. The, the opportunity to make, we are so privileged to be people with a creative spirit to see that in that room so warm so vibrant so alive there was nothing depressing in that room it was an absolute joy of uplifting spirits and so i guess for me it's made me reassess how important art is i have always believed that art save lives. And I think that this is another example of art saving lives. I think every artist who could focus on their work at this time and to make it for this show probably got a lot of personal benefit. I think everyone who sees the show in the gallery and on the film will get personal benefit. And certainly for me as a judge, I am still two or three weeks, two weeks later, warmed on the inside from being there. And the beauty and the detail was, was very considered, uh, the effort and the respect for the work was something that came through. 
uh, very evidently. We would like to say thank you to everybody who entered. It was such a joy and a delight to see all of the different techniques and the designs, the inspiration. It was, it was a real delight and a joy. I really do think that the Paper on Skin event in Bernie is incredibly important because the world is global now. It was cities, tiny cities, small areas are global and, and in fact universal. And so to see entries come from all over the world was very exciting. Uh, it means there's a cross-pollinization of art and artistry, influence, inspiration coming globally and into one small space. And I think that the, the future of this uh, event is uh, will be telling in two, three years time, maybe not right now, um, but um, I think that it'll get, get better, grow bigger, and it'll be considered on the calendar of events and art events in the world very important. It is now actually, it's considered important now.